Hey guys, Dr. Gooden here, and in this short video, we will talk about vector resolution and how it applies to biomechanics. So I'll give you a little example of a question from the Applied Biomechanics textbook by McLester and St. Pierre, great textbook. And I'll, I'll show you a graphical way to solve vector resolution problems. How do we figure out the X and the Y component vectors of a force vector caused by a muscle? And the question says, resolve each of the following muscle force vectors. One series represents the biceps brachii, while the second represents the brachial radialis. Based on your resolutions, describe the primary functions of the two muscles. Now, in today's video, I'm not going to do any quantifying of the resultant uh, force vector's magnitude or its direction. I just want to show you how to quickly and easily uh, graphically solve these problems. So we are going to ignore, for now, that distance. But just know that if you're doing this method on your own, you can use a ruler and a protractor to figure out the resulting angle as well as the magnitude of the force vector. So the two methods that we are going to talk about are the vector parallelogram method, and then we will address the vector chain method. Okay, but first, vector parallelograms. All right, so the first step is to remember that the parallelogram that we want to draw <clears throat> will run uh, two of the corners, two of the diagonal corners, will be uh, encompass the tip and the tail of the vector. I've already done figure one for you. That's what we want to end up with. So if you see figure one right there, those are the resultant x and y vectors. And that's what we want to try to get over here on figure two. And so step one told us that the tip and the tail will represent two diagonal corners of our parallelogram. Okay, we've got that in mind. Step two is to draw parallel lines for the horizontal component of this vector. Now, because this vector is originating on the forearm, the horizontal component uh, will be parallel with the forearm. Okay, so what I will do is just draw a line along the same, say, along the same line as the forearm. I will extend the line, duplicate it, and bring it up here. Okay, so now we see that on these two parallel lines, they run tangentially to the tip and the tail of this vector, and that vector is in between them. Step two is done. Step three is to draw two more parallel lines for the vertical component. Okay, but we have to remember now that the tip and the tail of this original vector stays within our parallelogram. So what I will do is start each of my lines either at the tip or the tail, and I will bring it down at a right angle to my original two lines so that it is perpendicular to them. And I'll start my next one at the tail and do the same thing. I'll extend these out. Okay, so now I have my guidelines in place. We have a four-sided parallelogram and two of these sides will make up the component vectors, but I don't know which ones yet. So let's look at step number four. We did number three, let's look at number four. Draw the component vectors leading away from the tail of the original vector. Okay, here's the tail. And I'm supposed to draw the um, vector components leading away from that tail. So what I will do is change to red. There's one leading away from the tail. And there's a second leading away from the tail. Okay, so I'll get rid of my guidelines that I drew and there we have it. We have the x and the y vectors. Here's y and here's x. Now notice something different between figure one and figure two. In figure one, the x component is much greater than in figure two. And in figure two, the y component is much greater. This x component in this case is a stabilizing force because notice that this vector is actually compressing the radius and the ulna into the humerus. Remember, this is the elbow joint that we're talking about, elbow, right there. And so if you have that force shooting up your forearm towards your elbow, it will actually compress those bones, those three bones together, and stabilize the joint. The Y component is called the rotary component, or the rotational force. It, it's what creates torque at the elbow. So we can now start to surmise about the functional force production capacity of the biceps at different ranges of motion on the elbow. This is why when your elbow is mostly extended, almost at full extension down to anatomical position, it's much more difficult to lift a weight up because your Y component, the rotational force vector, is much, much smaller than when you get towards uh, you know, close to 90 degrees. 
Now also the, the leverage of your forearm also changes. So those two things will work hand in hand and actually change the difficulty of the lift throughout the range of motion. For figure number three, it's very simple because we see that down here there's a right angle. So that right angle tells us that there's only this vertical component. So there's absolutely no uh, stabilizing force in this case. We just have a rotational component. And then I'm going to solve number four quickly, and then we'll talk about it. So I'm going to speed this up here. Okay, so if you notice, I now have the x and the y component, but see how the x component is in a different direction than the, than the previous stabilizing components. In this case, at this range of motion past 90 degrees, so at an angle less than 90 degrees at the elbow, the biceps brachii will be causing a destabilizing component. Destabilizing force. And y is still a rotational component or a rotary component. We've, we've done the biceps brachii. That's done. Okay, as we move on to the brachioradialis, what we're going to do is learn a new method. So we just learned how to draw a vector parallelogram. Now we will learn how to draw a vector chain. And this is really just the same as what we did, but it's half of the parallelogram. Um, so we're just drawing one half of it. And we just have to be really, care we have to be really careful that we draw the components in the right place. Because without the full parallelogram, it's easy to draw the component vectors, um, let's say, at the, starting from the tip instead of from the tail. Okay, so first we draw the horizontal vector. There we go. And then we draw the vertical vector. And it's about right here. Now, I drew those quickly, but what I could have done was drawn the vertical vector there and then moved it down to the tail. And you'll notice when I did that, it seems like my original vector was a little bit off, my original component vector. And that's really the danger of using this vector chain method. Because you don't have that parallelogram in place, it's a little bit easier to get these wrong. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this out using not the vector chain method, but the vector parallelogram method. So the vector chain method, you just go end to end with the vectors and then make sure that they line up. I like the vector parallelogram method better. Okay, so we have solved all of the vector resolution problems here, and we've done it for the biceps brachii and for the brachioradialis. Now, if we check out the component vectors, look at the difference between the stabilizing component of the brachioradialis and the biceps brachii. We can see that as the biceps brachii goes through its full range of motion, we change from a stabilizing component um, in the x in the x component to a destabilizing component. In fact, if we were to graph it, it might look something like this, where we have stabilization and destabilization. And we start off where the biceps brachii, the force that it's producing, is creating a lot of destabilization. But as you go through its range of motion, that decreases until you're at 90 degrees, and then it becomes a destabilization destabilizing force. This point where it switches would be at about 90 degrees. Okay, so if we had to graph it, it might look something like that. I just kind of made that up. Um, but we see that at some point it switches from stabilizing to destabilizing. Whereas with the, with the brachial radialis, that X component is very large and in the entire time it's actually a, a huge stabilizing component. So without the brachial radialis, then your, your elbow joint would be much less stable than it is, especially during elbow flexion. Okay, so that is how we can use vector resolution, either the parallelogram or the vector chain method to solve biomechanical problems. All right, and if you want to learn how to do vector 
composition next, go ahead and head on over to this video that will appear on this side of my head. And if you had any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'd love to answer them and connect with you um, in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the videos. Okay, I'll see you over in the next video.